time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. We're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our lives, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to blank. Hey! Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live. Today is Wednesday, October 25th. S&P down 65, NASDAQ down a bloody 2.6%, 390. Russell down 26 and Dow down 134. Dow's down less than a half a percent. Gold and silver mixed, notes and bonds lower, 10-year yield back up to 4.95. Oil and natty gas up, grains down, Bitcoin up a couple percent, and VIX up 10.5%, back almost to 21. And we are approaching lows of day. Low today in SPX was 4181, currently at 4183. I uh, did an AM ratio, got stopped out of that. I did an early quiet lunch kind of massaged the back test based on the current parameters and it still looked good. Got stopped out of that. Uh, I had an iron duck on and when SIBO had issues, um, I sh literally, I shouldn't have gotten stopped out, but I ended up getting stopped out for a small loss, which in hindsight ended up benefiting me. So thank you, SIBO, I guess. And then I put on a little gap and go PM iron condor that hit 40% and I've got my remaining half on still here. Yeah, in, in hindsight, I'm not I'm not filing a complaint. So for power hour, looks like we might get 10 wide, maybe 5 wide by the time this thing shakes out here in the next couple minutes. Go ahead and buy some longs for power hour tranche one. Yeah. I was uh, I was hoping with a drop like this, we may get 15 or 20 wide, but not so much today. Looks like it's going to be five wide. Give it another minute. Got about 11 and a half point expected move left for the day. Got my 5.7 that I still need to close. It actually could use a little bit more downside. Benefit that. Show you that here in just a moment. <laughs> yeah, I saw Murph Dog. So you end up closing that one. You know, I mean, my back test, it shows either closing at the end of day at one DTE or end of day, zero DTE. So I opted to, it's kind of in the middle. I opted to hold it for today. So end of day is what I was waiting for. And I mean, we just happened to get a nice down move. It kept on going and going and going. It was up closer to 12, 1300 bucks. It's up about 740 right now with this little bounce. All right. Five wide, 
90s and 85s. Tranche one five wide. Trying to get eight thirty five. Filled at eight thirty five on the nineties, eighty fives. So my uh, this is my this is where my five sevens at right now. I don't want to take a loss on it. So if it starts to push up much more, I'm just going to take it off, book a small profit. See if this thing is going to go back down. Dick K told me we're going down, so I got to hold it. It's when the machine speaks, you listen. Dick K, do you like the uh, Dick Kelsey <laughs> meme this morning? I enjoyed that. I had a, I had a few chuckles out loud to myself on that one. <laughs> I like to laugh at my own jokes. I don't know if you guys know. I'm pretty much the funniest guy now. Yeah, so I had a couple couple people ask about the VIX and gap filters in Option Omega. So I just wanted to um, go over a little bit of that while we have some time kind of in between trades here. So let me just give you an example, and then you guys can ask whatever other questions you have on this. So for example, here is my reverse iron condor test. And so one of the filters I have on here is um, actually, I must have accidentally changed that to 1%. That should be 0.25. Hang on a second. I must've been messing around with it and accidentally saved it. Five. All right, so <clears throat> so I have a VIX overnight move down minimum of 0.25%. So what I'm what I'm doing here is essentially, you know, on a, on a reverse iron condor, for example, you're essentially buying premium, right? You're you're buying an iron, iron condor as opposed to selling it. So when we buy when we buy this, we want to do it after volatility has contracted. So the filter is used to say, okay, if the VIX opens up down, meaning volatility has contracted, that's when it makes this more attractive to get in. And so that that that's an example on a on a reverse iron condor. Uh, the opposite when it comes to like, let me look at like a AM ratio. Let me just Monday, my Monday, Wednesday, I don't use a filter, but like um, AM ratio Friday, for example. So on this one where I'm selling an iron condor, I I want volatility be, to be expanding to sell premium, right? We want to sell high and buy low. We want to buy low and sell high. So on this one, I use a VIX overnight move of a max of a quarter of a percent. So in other words, if volatility is contracting more than a quarter percent, this doesn't back test well. So I want volatility to be down very little or to be expanding for me to put this trade on. So it's just, it's, it's regardless of zero DTE, it's, you know, really any time frame. you want to, you want to sell premium when the options are expensive, when implied volatility has expanded and you want to, you know, 
if you're going to buy premium, you want to do that when, when premium's low, looking for it to expand from there. Does that make sense? JBPR and then Wally World, are you in here? So the in Option Omega, which is the software we use for backtesting, they don't necessarily have an implied volatility indicator filter. It's just VIX. So you're just looking at VIX. If VIX is down more than a quarter of a percent, that's that's kind of the most common VIX overnight filter we use. Yeah, VIX is is VIX measures the 30 day at the money options of SPX. So it's a measure, it's a it's a it's a measure of implied volatility. So the VIX is going up, implied volatility is going up. But again, it VIX specifically measures the 30 day at the money options of SPX. So like <clears throat> you know, I also have this implied volatility indicator that I measure where implied volatility is based on a percentile and IV rank version. Um, and I, I look at it, I look at it on an annual basis. So where's implied volatility compared to where it's been the last 252 trading days and the last 21 trading days or essentially a month to get an idea. So for example, obviously the VIX is up today. So you can see the, the volatility indicator is going up as well. Hey Wally World, I see you, I see you just posted on the Zoom chat. All of our uh when we're streaming live, go to the Zero Live chat channel in Discord. Let me know if that made sense to you Wally World. Oh, alpha options. Um, maybe I didn't miss, maybe I misunderstood your question. As VIX rises, does its IV rise or fall? And the answer to that is yes as well. So for example, you can look at our implied vol. If you have toss, you can look at the IV indicator on VIX. So typically when VIX is going up, the volatility on volatility is also going up. So the volatility on VIX is going up as it's going up. As it's going down, the volatility is typically contracting. Is VVIX still a symbol? Yeah, so VVIX, V-V-I-X is a symbol, and that's the actual volatility on VIX. So you can look at that as well. All right, SPX coming back down, 4185-ish. I added a uh, 
downside vertical spread to our single put calendar and SPX just to protect the downside. We do have Mr. Powell taking the stand after the after the bell today. So I just wanted to protect the downside. If it bounces, I will, oh, I may add another calendar to help with the upside, but uh, just wanted to protect the downside. I wonder if the market's going down because it just, it knew Jerome was taking the stand after the bell. It's like, yeah, let's just get this out of the way. Let's just go down before he, before he even gets in. Uh, yeah, JBPR. So that, um, <clears throat> So those are some indicators that uh, Aten Ra, one of our members, uh, created, just to give you a quick, easy glance. So basically what this shows is you've got gap minus 0.36. So S SPX gap down 0.36% today from yesterday's close. The move is the current move from today's open. So S&P is down, you can see, you know, SPX is down one and a half percent from yesterday's close, but from today's open, it's down 1.15%. That's what that one is. And then the VIX 9D ratio, that's VIX versus VIX 9D. I don't, I don't really use that for anything, but that's on there as well. That's another filter you can use in Option Omega. And then it shows the max move and max, uh, max move up and max move down on the day. And that's from the open, today's open. So it's really handy to just have on your chart to uh, just kind of take a look at. And you can find those in the Zero DTE course channel. Uh, you can see the uh, toss shared links posted there. My PM iron condor is looking good so far. Let's see. I've got to hit my 80%. I'm looking for four bucks. It's currently trading at 640. My tranche one I got in at 835. I'm looking for five bucks to uh, reduce my stop on tranche one. Tranche two in about six minutes. I don't know if Wally World ever made it in. Wally World, I just tagged you in the correct channel. Zero live chat. Just want to make sure you understand. Everything was clear that I mentioned to you. Yeah, I, I saw him. And he he said he's on the he's on the Zoom call, so I I told him where we were. Ranch one currently trading at seven fifteen. There he is. Did I answer your questions? Wally World, does that make sense?
for you PMMers, that PM time fly is getting a little close to the edge. I may close that one before the end of the day. All right, good. Well, welcome, Wally World. Glad to see you're dipping your toes in the zero DTE land. Yep, JBPR, correct. Just protecting the downside. You know, Jerome's taking the stand after the market closes, so who knows what he'll say. Could get a little wild, so I've got a lot more room to the upside. And if it does bounce, then I can adjust with another calendar tomorrow. Um, there's no tutorial. Atten Ra just created those, um, chart labels, but, but what questions do you have? They, they're pretty self-explanatory. You got gap, move and max move. The gap is what the S and P gapped overnight. The move is where it currently is from the open and the max move and max, max move up and max move down are the maximum amount they've moved from the open today. There was the tutorial. There you go. All right. Toronto one's still pretty centered here. Trading at 680. Launch two here in a couple minutes. Buying my lungs. Looks like we may get ten wide. Could be the same strikes. Going with the 90s, 80s. Well, no. 90s, 85s. Six fifty five. Build at six fifty five on the nineties, eighty five. So same strikes. I'm looking for three ninety five to reduce tranche two. Yeah, JBPR, that was from this morning. That was at the open. The expected move was 20 
26 points from the open. Obviously, we smashed through that. I always mark the expected move on my chart. So see this dotted yellow line here? That was the downside expected move at the open. We smashed through that. It's about a two and a half standard deviation move today. Yeah, and if you look at your option chain, every every option chain has the expected move for that period. So between now and the end of tomorrow, the one DTE, see the expected move, move is plus or minus 38 and change. Expected move at the end of Monday is 70 and change. Dick K, you holding your 5-7 right up until 10 minutes to the bell? Are oh, you already bounced? Oh, yeah, I guess I, I do have, I'm supposed to close half at 50%. I did not do that. Let's go to half at 20%, I mean. So let's see, I got into my five, seven, 1345. I'm up about 12% right now. No, I don't I don't have profit targets on my power hour trades. I reduce if I get to forty percent, I reduce the stop on tranche one and two, but I don't I don't take profits early. Ranch one is at 585. I'm looking for five bucks to reduce my stop.
Uh, Ken, that should not be the case. So you've, you must be doing something. My uh, PM Iron Condor is trading at 440. I'm looking for four bucks to close my last last portion. Are you on toss, Ken, with that one, with the 5.7? Did you click on a wrong leg or something? Sometimes when I have accidentally messed up, sometimes the easiest thing to do is go back to the order and toss, find it in your past filled orders, and then just do an opposite order. That way you know you got everything correct. Sometimes if I'm, you know, if I'm clicking on legs from the analyze screen and then right clicking to close the trade, sometimes I'll accidentally, you know, click on a, a leg that doesn't belong to that specific trade. Launch one down to 560. Coming up on tranche three. Launch three in two minutes. Looks like the 95, 85s possibly. Launch one still hanging around five fifty. Give it another minute. <clears throat> All right, looking at the 9585s for tranche three. Tranche three, 10 wide. We get filled at 350. Filled at 350 on some of them. There we go. Filled at 350, 10 wide, 9585s. 
getting a little bounce here. Ugh, my 5.7 just went to scratch. Shoulda, coulda, woulda got. I, did, I didn't, I should have had a profit target to close half at 20%. Like my, uh, like my plan says to do, I just totally forgot. Price to come down just a little bit to get out of my rest of my PM iron condor. Tranche one trading down to four five forty. Five thirty. And out of my PM iron condor, eighty percent. Nice. Once tranche one gets down to five bucks, I'll change my stop to eight dollars. So five fifteen. down to around 87 we'll definitely get there another point another point lower will do it hanging around 515 Five ten. Just a little bit lower. Five oh five. Five. I saw five flash. There we go. Reducing stop on trunch one. And tranche two, which is the same strikes, I need um, three ninety five. So I need another buck, a little buck, a little bucky buck to come out of it. Reduce that one. Uh, alpha options. To your earlier comment on Vivix, I realize we are using backtest data, but it would seem hypothetically worthwhile to watch Vivix if it moves up for days like today. Pending Fed global conflicts could be help on when to add the calendar or take it off like you did today. Not routine, but situational. Um, add the add the calendar. Which which calendar are you talking about? Are you saying add when I added the vertical to my calendar? No, I don't. Uh, I definitely don't add calendars on days when implied volatility is spiking. I, I I enter calendars on days when implied volatility is contracting, unless it's like this morning. I traded a one two, which I just do every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But um, for maybe what I was talking about here on the stream was I have a I had a 
I already had a, um, a calendar in SPX, which was this one here. It's trading down near the the lower end of that calendar. And so I added a vertical spread for protection to the downside. So now it looks like that. Is that is that what you were talking about? Is that what you were referring to, I guess I should say? But yeah, I don't I don't necessarily look at VVIX just because I I have my navigation trading implied volatility indicator so I can see what the volatility of VIX is doing. If I just click on VIX and I can see the volatility on VIX and kind of where where it's been relative to where it's been the last year, the last month. So that to me that's that's how I look at it. Yeah, I, I kind of, during power hour, I mean, once I get my trades on, I kind of jump around to other positions. So sorry, that may have been confusing. All I do for power hour is tranche one, two, and three. So I'm in all three tranches. I reduced my stop on tranche one, waiting for tranche two to get down to 395. And I'll reduce it. So what did they manually, did they close it for you, Ken? Okay. Hmm. All right. What am I going to do with my five, seven? A really nice profit going. And then this little bounce happened. That's the problem with the old gamma. When you get down to the wire. Our hour trades could use a little downside as well. Yeah, when I set up my uh, Quanteo, when I set up my, <clears throat> oh man, like this thing push. When I set up my OCO orders, it has a stop and a 90% limit. And that's just so I can easily adjust that at the end of the day. So if I want to get out with five minutes to go, I can just adjust that up. So it's already there. Or if I decide to take it to the bell, I can get rid of it or lower it down to 10 cents, which I do sometimes. Tranche one stops at eight bucks, currently trading at 710. Need a pullback. Elliot, all out. Not feeling it today, huh? Oh, yeah, you hate Wednesdays. <laughs> Wednesday has, uh, it has betrayed our trust, hasn't it, the last few weeks? It's going to come back and redeem itself today.
You got Wednesday in a timeout. All right, I'm going to give my five, seven, ten minutes before I pull the plug. I got so discount if you're looking at my screen on this little push up right here. Let me get it bigger. On this little, uh, on this little bounce, I survived the whole initial flush. Then we, we got this little bounce right here about an hour after the market opened, I got stopped out somehow. And it was because of the SIBO issues going on. All of a sudden it just took me out. So it, so it stopped. Um, so, which ended up being in my favor because I would have gotten stopped out for my normal loss. Instead, I got, you know, I got in at 760, stopped out at 910. So it was a small loss. But that data issue must have, must have just triggered it. Trader Jim's on the Wednesday is sketchy train. Closed out of a time fly today just for a little scratch profit to protect the downside and then jumped right back in in the same cycle, repositioned it. Put on a duck earlier today. Market wasn't down nearly as much as it was to uh, at this point. VXX closed out half yesterday. It came all the way back up to basically break even on this remaining half. I'm going to wait to reload though. I want to see if if we get another pop above these recent highs. You know, if VXX gets above 27, 28, I'll be jumping in with some more. Back down below 90, please. Anywhere between 85 and 90 is good for me. Market on close, 26 million sell side is the early indication. I don't have any stats on it, Chris. I've just been watching it. So far, I don't really think there's anything to glean from it. I just know that if it ends up being a big number or if it you know switches from sell to buy in a pretty major way, then you get some market movement. But then, you know, as far as there's nothing really you can do about it at that point. So I don't know. It's just something I'm kind of watching.
Tranche number two is trading at 550. I need 395. I don't do anything different with it. There you go. Come on back down. It's nice and warm below 4190. Wuga, what are you doing here? I thought you were getting a root canal. You already done? Ah, uh, after the market. Okay. Good planning. <laughs> trading in the chair. You don't, you probably don't want to be trading and you get a little happy gas going on. All right, there we go. Crunch two down to four seventy. Or forty. Or thirty. Or twenty five. I need about thirty more cents. It's right in the sweet spot between 85 and 90. Just got to sit here for a few minutes. Uh, I've looked at the gamma. Is that spot gamma? I've looked at it. I don't, I mean, to me, it's just like, any other level it's it's really how you trade around that how you manage your risk how you manage your position around that level so i don't i don't i don't use it down to 415 410 405 395. All right. Reducing my stop on tranche two. Just like fibs, right, Decay? You know, I don't. I, I, I say all the time, I don't have anything against using any of that stuff. It's just, you know, we all perceive things differently. So whatever gives you the confidence to help you manage a trade better, go for it. All right. 15 tell. So I'll get out of my um, five, seven.
build at 1520. All right, so the five seven ended up being a nice little winner. Could have made more if I've got out a little bit ago, but it's all right. I was up around twelve hundred bucks at one point at the lows of day, but <clears throat> of course you're never gonna hit the hit the exact best. I'm good with it. I stuck to my, the only thing I did wrong was I didn't, I should have closed half at 20% and I just didn't even think about it. Tranche one trading at 350. Tranche two trading at 350. Tranche three trading at two dollars and twenty cents. Elliot. Look how much money you left on the table because of your hatred towards Wednesdays. Hundred and twenty four million sell side. Final number coming out in two minutes. Need to chop around right between that 85 and 90. No need to get excited. Jerome's not here yet. Save your little dog and pony show dance for after the market. My one, two from earlier today is up. My three, four from Monday is struggling. This is my three, four right in the valley. Need drum to say something to move move the market one one way or another. 
up or down 60 points should do it taking that off in the morning Less than 10 minutes to go. Tranche one and two trading at 280. Tranche three trading at a buck 20. So alpha options, whenever premium gets, uh, when when implied volatility gets low, you know we're we're looking for a specific credit on each side. So when implied volatility is low, we'll be end we'll end up just doing an iron butterfly. Essentially, we'll you know we're buying the wings and then we're selling this selling the straddle at the money. So we end up we'll end up doing plenty of those. We prefer not to. We prefer to be wider. Uh, as far as double goes. Um, you know, you're just you're just really using more contracts than you need to. Double butterfly, the risk profile graph will be similar to an iron condor. Get the little bat wing, bat bat ears. But I think you're better off just doing an iron condor. Yeah, so once I once I buy the longs, all I'm doing they're, they're basically dead to me. From that point on, I'm just focused on managing the shorts because the the longs are worthless. You know, I buy them for five or ten cents. You can see they're all worthless at this point, so they'll just, they'll just expire. All your risk is in the shorts. and all your profit. Well, I guess I'll keep my PM time fly. Mauro, you keeping yours? I'm doing whatever you're doing. Keeping it, all right, we'll go down together. Market bounces will be in business. If it goes down, we will wish we closed it. At five minutes till, I'm going to close tranche two. Round two, I've got an order at a buck fifty.
Another buck sixty. Build it a dollar sixty on tranche two. Four minutes to go. Tranche one, I've got an order at 80 cents. Need a little bounce. Tranche three, my order is at 35 cents. Eighty five is the low strike on both of those. Need a bounce. Hold above eighty five, please. Final number two hundred thirty million to the sell side. Pretty low. Tranche three down to 57 cents. Tranche one should get filled at 80 cents if we bounce just a little bit. I said, if we bounce just a little bit. Starting to get filled at 80 cents. Got three contracts filled. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, out of tranche one at 80 cents. We've got tranche three at 10 cents. It's currently trading at 55. Still need a little bounce. Still got to stay above 85. Tranch one, I got in at Tranche two, I got in at six fifty five. So tranche one, I made seven thousand five fifty five. Tranche two, I made seven thousand nine twenty. And tranche three is trying to give me another 3,500 in 10 seconds. Hold your head up, buddy. Hold it up for another 10 seconds. Ding, ding, ding. Pin on tranche three. Very nice. Is that right? Let me see. 350. Yeah, 35. Uh, no. 350 times 14 is 
4,900 on tranche three. So 4,900 plus 7920 plus 7555 equals a little over 20K today, my friends. Not bad on a Wednesday. It owed us. It owed us from the last few. Awesome. All right, my friends, tomorrow, what do we got on the docket for tomorrow? Tomorrow is the 26th. Yeah, so I'll be streaming live at the open tomorrow morning, and then we will be back for Power Hour Live. All right, good stuff, my friends. Have a good night. Talk to you soon.